Okay, uh, do you believe in, in reincarnation? No, I don't. Well, define to me what that means. Reincarnation would be the idea of transmigration of souls, that, that you previously existed, and therefore you came back either as a human or an animal or whatever. Well, well, let me let me clarify this real quick. Uh, my position on reincarnation is, is the one you described. That's like a Hindu belief, which I I'd agree that's totally going off right. believing believing that um that you know a human can die and come back as like a cow or, or an alligator or a fly or something. Yeah, that's obviously false. However, the idea that a person can die but then in the future come back uh, again as a person, you know, I do subscribe to that uh, belief, and I do believe it. There are plenty of places in the Bible that do support um, some type of uh, reincarnation uh, taking well, place. I, I, I um, disagree, but go ahead. Okay, I, I know you disagree, but that's why I'm going to challenge your viewpoint on it. Let me give you an example real quick. Um, John the Revelator, he died on the island of Patmos. You could agree with me on that? Yes. Okay, cool, cool. So, um, so after he wrote the revelation, you know, he didn't escape that island. He died there, right? He didn't get a chance to teach before any other peoples. Yeah, there's different there's different views about it. Some say he was boiled in, in oil. Others say that he uh, just died in peace as an old man. Okay, but but you, you'd agree that he died on that island where he was imprisoned to, right? Well, I agree he's dead. And let's just say that. Okay, cool, cool. So here's the question, right? If... If he did die on the island, he didn't get a chance to, you know, spread the gospel or prophesy before anybody else with what he was given. So here's a question for you. Revelation chapter 10. I'll go to verse. Um, let's go to verse 10. It says, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, you must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Now, we agreed that he died after he got the revelation. So my question for you oh, is, hold, on, hold on, hold on. What do you mean he ahead. died after he got the revelation? Are you saying that he got another revelation after he died? Is that what you're saying? No, I, I'm saying maybe I maybe I misspoke or maybe you misheard me. I, I said after he received the revelation, he died on that island that he was on, the island of Bible. Well, he died like humans die. Let's put it that way. Right, right. So, so again, I'm simply asking you, well, when did he get a chance to prophesy before many people? Okay, came? well, well, first off, first off, uh, I think that's a misunderstanding about the, the, the book of uh, uh, Revelation. All right. Number one is when John is writing the letter, he's already had the vision. Okay, so he's writing John, uh, the book of Revelation and it does have prophecy in it, but it's also an epistle. The epistle was sent to those seven churches, that, and that's the circular route that's in there. So he sent other people ahead of it and everything. What it probably means, and I don't know if it is referring to John, I would have to look at it in context, is that it's just talking about you have more work to do before you die. It doesn't mean that he died at that wait, point. Wait, but let me, let me prove that it is. John possible. had all of those visions, and then he wrote. So he's alive after those visions. Wait, okay, but hold on, brother. I'm going to show you it is talking about him because if you read in context, he's having a conversation with the angel, right? The angel told him to take the book, eat it up, and he did. And then he said, he said, and he, I'm going to verse, um, bear with me a second, verse 11, right? And it opens up with saying, and he, who is the he? The he is the angel. It says, and he said unto me, you must prophesy again before many people and nations and tongues and kings. So the angel is telling John that he is going to have to go do that. Well, uh, okay. So let me let me back up to ten. I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and in my mouth it was sweet as honey. When I eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. Yeah, this happens in the Old Testament too. And they said to me, "So you and you said he." This one says they, so there must be a text or variant. You I'm must read out the King James. Okay, you must prophesy again concerning many people, nations, tongues. Okay. All that's referring to is that it just like in the Old Testament, whenever you read a book, it, it, it includes several different oracles. And so it's just saying, look, I showed you all of this stuff and now it's I'm going to give you a bitter pill to swallow uh, and I'm going to give you a hard message to speak. And so then he's just going to continue out and then he's going to talk about the prophecy. So in other words, he didn't live again. 
it's referring to the fact that he's going to prophesy inside the, the story. So find the place where he's told to prophesy again. Um, oh, you're, you're asking me that question? or, or is Yeah. That the end of your you don't think that John prophesies anywhere else in, in, well, in the uh, of Revelation? Well, well, he he's writing down the visions that that the angel shown to him. But but I'm simply showing you here is the angels telling him that he's going to have to go and teach before many peoples, nations, and kings again. Didn't say, it didn't say that people were going to take his book and read it in other nations. It said he was going to have to go and do it. But if you go look at Revelation nineteen ten, then I fell at the feet to worship him. But he said to me, "Do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren." And, and they talked about the prophets earlier who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the idea is, is that Paul is the last apostle and the apostolic circle. They're on his team. They've been given this message and the circuit writers are the ones given the message to the seven churches, which includes the full letter of the full revelation that we have here. And so uh, John, according to the Bible, Holy men of God, as they were uh, holy prophets or moved by the Spirit, are writing the scriptures. So the entire book of Revelation is a prophecy in itself. So John does not have to be dead and be brought back to life to prophesy again. This is just describing either two additional content that he gives in this vision uh, sequence, or it's referring to the fact of the, pro the that he still has ministry before he physically dies. This is very similar to what Jesus told Paul, that there are many people that are, you're going to be testified for or whatever, you know, and, and all of that stuff. Uh, you're my chosen vessel and all of that. that. That's just the focus of it. It's not saying John is going to be brought back at the tribulation or some other time uh, like that. Okay. But well, if you want to say John's going to be brought back, He's going to be brought back in the same way Moses and Elijah would be brought back. And they're dead. They have spiritual bodies. They don't have physical bodies like us. But I don't even believe that Moses and Elijah technically are going to be brought back as humans. I believe that they're going to be two witnesses. And their ministry is similar to that. Just as John the Baptist's ministry was similar to uh, Elijah and was called to be in the spirit of Elijah. Okay, well, well, we'll conclude on that particular verse. I got another one for you. Uh, okay. We'll go to Daniel, actually. Daniel chapter 12, and we'll go to verse 13. It says, But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest, and stand in thy lot at the end of days. Yeah. How do you interpret that to me? That's just saying that uh, there's a lot of things that are not going to happen. That I'm not going to reveal to you any more stuff right now. Uh, you're going to receive your allotted portion, which refers to your inheritance in the Messianic Millennial Kingdom. And so that's all it's saying is that he's going to physically die and then he's going to get resurrected and he's going to be given his inheritance in the Messianic Millennial Kingdom. Okay, I'll, I'll give you one more on reincarnation. Then if there's any other topics you want to bring up, we can. Uh, one more for you is, well, before I read the verse, um, let me ask you. Me and you could agree that everybody who was alive in the you know the first century when Christ was around, they all have died by now, right? We can obviously both agree on that. Right. Some people will go to uh, the end of John, where uh, John says, "What what's it say to you if he remains? Uh, uh, you follow me." There's some people that say that John the Baptist, I mean John the Apostle John, is still walking this earth. I don't believe it, but. Right, right. I, I, I agree with you that, um, that you know, everybody in that time period, of course, you know, is long gone now. But the reason I ask this is because if you go here, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, this is speaking about Christ's return. It says, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye will see him, and they also that pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so. Amen. So it's saying that the soldiers who pierced Christ's side when he was on the cross, they're going to see him when he returns. So my question for you is if even, as it says, right, even those that pierced him are going to see him, how are they going to see Christ return if they're dead? Because they're what, what you have is you have, uh, and when you're talking about prophecy, you have what's called group solidarity and representation. So uh, in Zechariah 12, 10, it says, I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace 
and a supplication, so that they will look on me whom they pierced, and they will mourn for him as the mourns for her only son, and they will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping for a firstborn. So this is just referring to the fact that Israel is going to recognize that they killed their Messiah. That's all it's referring to. Okay, okay. Um, I have one more question to ask you before I got to drop tonight, but, but, but to be fair towards you, do you have any question you want to ask me based upon our conversation tonight? No, sir. Okay, cool. Um, well, one, what, what organization do you associate yourself with most? Well, I, the reason I, I, I say that because you're non-Trinitarian, you don't believe in eternal hell, you believe, in, you, you believe in soul sleep. Yeah, but I've studied House of Yahweh. I've studied uh, okay, a lot okay, of okay. these. I, I, I get your group. question. I, I get your okay. question. Let me answer. Um, for those who don't know who I am, right? I'm ETT End Time Teacher. You can look me up on YouTube. My YouTube channel is named End Time Teacher. My icon on my channel is the same picture I have on the screen. I have like what 800 subs, something like that. I host these streams on my channel like every week or so. Always open panel. Everyone's welcome to hop on if you like. Um, but I'll say this, uh, I'm not affiliated with any particular camp. I'm not a member of any particular group. However, um, there are a few groups that I have listened to for like, you know, seven years. And the main group is GMS, stands for Great Millstone. The second camp would be a group called the Sakari, but they're a break off of GMS. Right, so those are right. the, the two main Hebrew Israelite um, camps, they call them that I listen to. However, I am not a member of those camps. Well, there are, well, forgive there my, are for my, teachings I teach different. Well, forgive my ignorance, but um, is this because you're you're recognizing that the 12 tribes chart doesn't just include Africans, but that it can include other people like Puerto Ricans and, and other things like that? Well, because I'm asking, because you're not black, right? Well, well, he, here's I don't know if you're very familiar with the chart, but but I, I would be Mexican, so they would consider me to be a Israelite. They consider right. me to be the tribe of Issachar, which is the the twelfth tribe. Okay, all right, yeah. Well, I know faithful to God, and uh, you know, and uh, I'm sure you know Vocabalone. him and stuff like that. Vocabalone. Yeah, well, I know of vocabulary. He's so no faithful to God. He's another one. He yeah, ministers I, I, I've, I've, heard I've known him for I've years. Heard of him before. He's Puerto Rican, I think. Uh, but regardless, even if let's say ethnically you really are the Israelites, it wouldn't change the fact that my argument is is that there's no theocracy on earth. Israel as a nation has been temporarily set aside. So you'll have to wait to the tribulation and the Messianic Millennial Kingdom before those prophecies will be fulfilled. Well, what about where God says that he favors Israel above the other nation? He does favor them, but that doesn't mean he's favoring them now. Give, give me uh, one verse that, that leads you to that conclusion. Well, what I, what I would argue like this is if we go back to, if we go to uh, Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. Uh, the anti-Semitism clause is this called. That's just a promise that God will hold uh, people accountable. It's not a promise of material wealth or, or blessings. A lot of people want to make those arguments and stuff, but I think that's almost sort of like a... a, a uh, a superiority argument and I don't go that route uh, so I I would say that God does favor the nation because number one he gave Israel his word according to Romans 9 it says it uh, to them belongs the doc uh, the the glory the covenants and all of this stuff Israel was the cust uh, custodians of God's word now everybody wants to claim to be Israel okay well fine and but yet they want to claim the people that are claiming to be Israelites are not actually Israelites Regardless of that, this is the point. Israel as a nation has been temporarily set aside. So you are a pilgrim and a sojourner in this world, and you won't receive that inheritance into then. And furthermore, if you do believe that the body of Christ, the church does exist, you're added to the body of Christ at the moment you believe. And so what that means is that you have an inheritance within the church now. Uh and the, but the problem is, is that whenever people take uh, the passages like uh, God, he was only sent to Israel and all of that. Yeah, that's true, because he was offering the kingdom to Israel. But the kingdom is not salvation. And uh, th so the issue is, how do you take those various passages and everything? But I'm, I'm glad you, you told me a little bit about your background and everything. Um, 